So this is an Abloy disc lock. I have picked it once and it was one of the least satisfying picks I think I've ever done. Um, I spent entirely too much time on this lock and I really am at the point where I think I might just want to get a new one to play with. We'll see if I can't get a little bit of a better pick this time. So uh, you go through and this top disc four is the tensioning disc. If I can see if I can grab it. And man, shh. give me all kinds of trouble. There it is. So, there's disc 4, and we'll shoot down to the bottom, kind of quickly get all the discs aligned clockwise. And I've picked this lock enough to know, I have a pretty good idea of where most of the true gates are. So I'm not going to have to focus as much on feedback, especially in the beginning stages, because again, I picked it a whole lot. And all right, so everybody's clockwise. Um, Let's get myself on the Abloy side over here and we'll give ourselves a lot of tension and start cooking over. Alright, that feels pretty good. Hop up to this one. And okay, that also Nope, that was that was bad. Let's uh let's rotate that back over and try that again. Uh, my hands are my hands have gotten tired of picking this lock a lot, so that feels really loose and frictionless. So here we I'm feeling quite a bit more friction on this disc, so snap it over into and that feels good. Let's try this one and again that feels pretty good to me. All three of those if I remember correctly uh, are the same cut. So I wasn't paying super close attention but Alright, so that's got a little bit of friction. Let's get one more. That is starting to feel really loose. Let's click one more over. Oof. I'm honestly not sure. Is it this one? Oh wow, yeah, no, it's that one for sure. Okay, so um, I'm trying to get out of this gate and it's not happening. So let's move up one more gate up to here. And feel what we can feel. Let's see here. Uh, that This feels pretty nice, honestly. Let's try a couple other positions out. Okay, these all feel pretty nice. Oh, well, I think I got a little bit of rotation on the core with that one. Okay. So, last time, I spent a very long time with, I think, having the lock picked. And this tensioning gate I had bumped it or something so I'm just gonna give it a nice nudge and then come up here and do this gate let's see if I can't get all right so it's definitely not a six that feels like that feels terrible okay that 
That feels, that feels really good. Maybe, hold on. Okay, that also feels really good. Let me come back to this. Let's, let's try this one. Okay, that already feels like it might be set. Maybe here? Nope, that feels better. And, right, this is the last disc, disc in the stack. Oh. Yes, alright. Um, I do not want anyone watching this to think that I'm really good at picking these locks. I'm not. Uh, I am really good at picking this lock. But, here it is. I've, I've just gotten really used to this lock's feedback. I kind of know what to expect. And I also have a general idea of where all these gates are after picking it a couple of times. But, I think what I'll do actually is um, is I'll take this lock apart and shuffle the discs. Let's see if I can't get this uh, with these abloys. You don't need the key to cut the lock. So to get a new picking experience, and that I've gotten this on a decent video. What I'll do is I'll just take it apart and I just won't even look at how I'm putting the discs and I'll just scramble them and put them back in whatever way I want to. And that will let me get, I think, a, hopefully a lot more fun out of picking this lock. Because like I said, I've, I've just have spent so long picking it that honestly it isn't even fun anymore. But I did want to get it. So, take this off. got this little, I don't, this is just a spacer of some kind. Alright, so there's a few things inside this lock, and it unloads from the front, well, from the back, I guess, but there's this, this piece right here, so this is kind of keeping, oh man, I'm not going to be able to get focus, keeping that sidebar in. So, I'll uh, hold that little piece in while I pull this out. And then there are two ball bearings, which I don't want to lose. There we go, okay. Just to kind of give you a little bit of a view of how this works. We have these two ball bearings sitting right here. If I can ever get this, there we go. These two ball bearings that sit right there. And then they interface with this. You can see those two little springs. So this top disc, it doesn't set anything. It doesn't interface with the sidebar. Um, it just kind of sits there and rotates. And these operate as detents to help it click into place. So. If I can get my tweezers, I'll just grab these out of my hand. I'll just put them here. And I'll just kind of show you this little guy as well. You can kind of see how that slots around that sidebar. Maybe try to be a little bit faster here with my gutting. This is taking a little while. And we lost it. But there's this little pin in here. I'll drop this sidebar out. I'll set that there and just take a quick glance at the floor, see if I can't. Eh, it's not worth it. I'll find that piece later. In the meantime, I think it'll be instructive to see how these gates work. They're pretty neat. There we 
All right, yeah. So I'll bring this up closer to the camera. And you can see that the sidebar that I just took out would have gone into this slot when the key has the lock unlocked. And you can see the false gates that tri trip you up when you're picking. So it feels like you've done something good, but you're actually in a false gate. And this lock opens, the key can turn in two directions. So I believe it has two sets. I'll go down here and I'll start the ungooding process. And you know, since I said I wanted to scramble this lock, maybe I won't spend too much time on this. I have found that using tweezers is not really the most effective way to get at the internals of this. I'm just slipping the hook in here it can help you get inside of it a lot more easily. You can kind of see that I'm taking out a spacer and a disc at the same time. It's not necessarily on purpose, that's just how they come out. Well, I eschewed tweezers and And there you go. So that is the Abloy disc lock. And I guess I'm going to show you the inside of this body here real quick. Maybe. There we go. So there's that big slot where the sidebar would sit while the lock is locked. And then you can see that. Yeah. And here it is this, you know, that the spring that kind of exploded out would have, well, it wasn't really a spring, it was a hole, it would have gone here. I didn't really talk about them, but there's these two bars and the lock that help restrict the motion. They are right here. See those ball bearings in the C-clip, and we'll just kind of go through and show off these discs. And maybe if I can get the key, show you the key as well kind of a boring bidding, honestly. Um, big part of why I want to uh, shuffle these discs around and maybe pick it another time for fun. You can see those three cuts down there at the bottom are all the exact same, I think. So yeah, anyway, there is the Abloy disc lock.